Hello, it's bang on 10 o'clock. I will give it a couple of minutes for people to turn up and what have you. Move you away just a little bit. So I'm going to check on my iPad that I can see me. <laughs> there I am. And that way I can so see. To... Oh, turn me off. Turn sound off. Oh, right then. You all having a good week? Been right. It's been busy. It's always busy, but it's um it's half term here next week, so my children will be off school next week. Um, so I won't get my normal sort of business hours in that I normally would. So I've been trying to do extra this week, ready for next week. So I've actually already written next week's blog posts, for example, um, things like that. They're all done, basically. Um, <clears throat> I probably won't go live in the Stamping with Val group next week because I'm not sure when I'm going to get even five minutes space, <laughs> never mind half an hour or so. So there probably won't be a weekly craft and chat next week while the kids are on holiday, but we'll be back the following week. Um, I'm live in the Crafty Carrot next week with my tutorial for that group. Um, so I'm sort of shoehorning that in. My, my husband's going to be off work and on holiday that week as well. So hopefully um, he might be able to sort of take them off somewhere quietly for a little bit. So if you're in the Crafty Carrot for, um, for February with our Sweet Sentiment collection, you'll see my projects next week. Um, and um, it's the Crafty Carrot that I'm kind of going to be chatting with you a little bit about today and um, showing you uh, our craft is going to be about the um the egg cartons that i made for the crafty carrot blog hop on well it was late monday night but actually it was tuesday for me very early tuesday morning for me i schedule it and sleep obviously <laughs> um but the go live time is something like 9 p.m in america somewhere in america um which is actually about two o'clock in the morning for me personally so obviously mine's all scheduled um and i think it's well into tuesday must be well into tuesday for the um for the australians and new zealand people it must be well into tuesday morning for them so it's kind of monday slash tuesday um that that blog pop went live depending on where you're watching from um so i want to tell you a little bit more about the crafty carrot and how you can join in and what you can expect to get um with them so the crafty carrot is a reward program um it's actually the brainchild of jennifer frost and um susan wong over in australia and new zealand and they wanted to basically offer their online customers some more and they wanted to offer more and they wanted it so that we could work together to offer more so by working together as a bit of a cooperative between us we can offer more to our customers so um there's a representative from all the um most of the, most of the stamping up markets so i represent uk and europe krista fratton represents canada cindy schuster represents america susan wong represents new zealand and jennifer frost represents australia um and that means that we can invite customers from our uh, market to join us but then between us we create lots and lots of tutorials to share with you so the idea is is that during um the month you purchase you purchase from your crafty carrot demonstrator um we recommend a particular stamp set or product so we're currently recommending a basket bunch which is where this little basket and what have you comes from that's our recommendation to purchase during february but you don't have to purchase it you can purchase whatever you like um and then all through march we will all be doing tutorials using that stamp set so the idea is not only that you know when you make purchases you make informed purchases and then you get a whole load of ideas to to use with your purchase there's nothing worse and i'm guilty of it stamp set sitting on shelves and you bought it you loved it and then your brain goes what am I going to do with that you know and then it sits there and I, I'm guilty of that I've done that um I often get surprised that the stamp sets I love the most when a catalogue comes out are sometimes the ones most in danger of sitting there not doing anything and the ones I end up using are the ones 
that I didn't expect to like. It's, it's very strange. It's very strange. I don't know if that happens to you. If it does, let me know. Um, because I'd like to know it's not just me. <laughs> I want to know that it's a global crafters phenomenon and not just me. Okay. So, um, but yeah, that happens to me all the time. I love that stamp set. I have to, that's top of my list stamp set. And then it comes and you're like, I don't know, what am I going to do with it? <laughs> so the idea is, is that if you buy our recommended um, uh, stamp set, then you're going to get a whole load of ideas to use with it. And in there you'll get technique tutorials, you will get um, 3D type tutorials. Um, what else is there? Uh, there's always a bonus one that can be anything. I think we do a bit of a case the catalogue challenge in there. And there's another one and right now I can't actually remember what it is. <laughs> I know there were four specific ones and then we kind of have a bonus at the end of the month and that whoever's got that one does sort of a bit of a free-for-all so this month I'm doing the 3d so I'm um, using sweet sentiments which was the stamp set that they purchased in January and are now getting lots of tutorials on in February so basically in the crafty carrot Facebook group for the month um, each week you get a live video um, with the technique or whatever it is that they're showing that week. Hi Baz! Oh, you're welcome anytime, don't worry. I've just been waffling, don't worry. Um, so you get a live video and then you get a tutorial to go with it, a PDF that you can download and save in your inspiration folder or whatever you're, you're going to do with it to refer back to it. And you get that every week through the whole month. So you end up with five um, tutorials. And then we kind of have a bit of a, you know, make something based on the projects you've seen. It doesn't have to be a copy, just how you've been inspired that month by what we've done. Post it into the group and then you can win prizes as well. Um, all those kinds of things. So it's a really fun place to be and you get that just for buying the stuff you would have bought anyway. Um, so why not? If you're going to buy it anyway, you might as well get some extra freebies and stuff out of it. So to join us in March, we are recommending that you buy Basket Bunch. And if you want to, you can buy the coordinating dies. I would. Um, and we're also going to be using the Succulent Garden Designer Series paper that I've used on here as well. Um, as a sort of a bundle of products, they're absolutely gorgeous. And that's enough to get you a celebration item as well. So um, that takes you to that golden £45. So then you can pick a celebration item. Um, I'm just going to even up my thread now because it wasn't central um so <clears throat> that's our recommendation then you'll be added to our group for march and all through march you will see lots and lots of great tutorials and videos and what have you um using that stamp set basically so so that's how the crafty carrot works so whether you're in the uk if you're in the uk or europe you can purchase through me and um you'll find the coast code, the reward code to use on my blog at the bottom of most of my blog posts, but also in my right hand sidebar on the, um, right hand sidebar of my blog, you'll see the coast code to use there as well. Make your purchase, use the hostess code, boom, you're in. Okay. Baz says, love the carton, thinking of getting it. These cartons, they're actually sold out in America and Canada. I don't know about the United States, but over there, uh, sorry, I don't know about Australia and New Zealand, but certainly in the US and Canada, these are sold out and they're not going to be back in stock until after Easter. I know, right? Okay, so if you are thinking of getting them, get some now. Okay, don't hang about. Okay, get some now. All right, I'm going to stock up and get a whole load because usually what goes out of stock over there, goes out of stock over here just a few weeks later basically so don't hang about get some all right um i'm gonna get some so yes so but obviously they come they come kind of a, like an off white natural color so they come in a box like this not sure what you can see my um ipad's way behind where i am Okay, and then very carefully, they're all sort of piled up like that. Okay. 
okay and they're sort of an off-white natural color sort of a creamy very vanilla kind of color okay they're just like a regular four four square egg carton okay like that you can fit real eggs in there okay but failing that you can go to the shop and you can buy yourself a load of these little chocolatey eggs okay uh, they do go in there i find actually they fit <laughs> these ones must be quite pointed or something they fit better upside down okay and then they fit in there okay how many do you get you get eight in a box i think seven pound 25 rings a bell rings a bell and you get eight in the box so thinking about doing them for the kids at easter um i've kind of i used to do my kids um every holiday valentine's christmas easter i would make something and send it into school all the time and as they've gotten older and moved through the years i've kind of done less and less and less <laughs> So I haven't done anything so far this year. They didn't get anything at Christmas. They haven't had anything at Valentine's. So I might, I might buy a whole load of these and I might um, do them all a little Easter thing. They're year five now. So they're kind of all getting a bit old for it now. But maybe it's one of my last ones. Maybe I'll do them all a little Easter carton. Or maybe we'll just do them for teachers. Because actually there's like 32 kids in the class. So I'd need quite a lot, wouldn't I? <laughs> okay. But the beauty of these is you can colour them okay you can spritz them up okay so if you were if you were at convention or on stage or one of those things you you might have seen um i think sarah douglas did it on stage very quickly um so and she showed you that you can color them but i'm, I'm going to show you again in case you didn't see that in case you weren't there and she did do it quite fast um she already had it made up i'm going to show you from scratch so but whether i can get it all onto the screen that's going to be the interesting thing i was thinking of doing for teachers and a few friends yeah um that's mm, yeah i might just do for the teachers maybe otherwise it could be i'd have to do about four we've got loads of teachers in their class as well i have to do about 40. yeah maybe i'll do for close friends instead <laughs> otherwise i'll be spritzing from now till christmas never mind easter start now easter's quite late so we've got a little while so we're all right but like i say i would things that go out of stock over there if they haven't got any they can't ship any more to us can they so um i might order mine today <laughs> make sure i get them so but they're just so cute just so cute so we're going to need that one okay so yeah i spritzed this one a lilac -y color i say a lilac -y color it was actually perfect plum because I was like, oh, I want to do a purpley one. What purple reinkers have I got? And, but I don't actually own all the reinkers. I only buy them as and when an ink pad's getting a bit dried up. Um, so I actually don't own anywhere near like all the reinkers at all. I mostly own the ones for the colours I use the most, which I'm not sure why, therefore, I've got perfect plum because I almost never use it. It's the only purple in my collection. The purple in this paper is actually the sugar plum, sweet sugar plum. But I imagine, actually, if you use the ink on that, it would come out very pale. So I've actually used perfect plum and it came out, it came out quite pale. Um, the trick with it is, like anything, less is more. OK, you can always add more. You can't take away. So I just got it to a point where it was a colour I liked, which was a sort of a pale purple colour. And actually, it goes quite well with the paper. It coordinates quite nicely. OK, so that one was Perfect Plum. This one, this was actually Old Olive Reinker in here, which is, is the colour in this paper. It kind of reminds me, do you remember the old Certainly Celery? It's kind of come out that colour. I would say i think this was old olive it could have been pear pizzazz thinking about it yeah i've changed my mind i think maybe this was pear pizzazz okay this is actually the first one i did and it's a little bit ropey okay if you look here it's actually a little bit dodgy now the reason for that is when i did it the first time i only had water I, you you really need an alcohol based spritz mix and i didn't have any alcohol um and I don't drink, so I couldn't just raid the booze cupboard or anything like that. Um, so I just used water. Now, because the egg cartons are quite thick, it did withstand it. 
um it got quite wet though and i actually put this one on a warm radiator to dry out um but it did suffer a little bit so i jumped on ebay and i ordered myself a big bottle of isopropanol alcohol okay um it's also i think isopropyl alcohol isopropanol uh, i think in america they call it rubbing alcohol um some places you can get it from your local chemist this came from ebay okay <laughs> all right this one i was actually I was struggling to get what i want this is actually pretty much 100 percent, 99.9 okay so it's really flammable and uh you have to be careful with the fumes as well <laughs> otherwise you can go a bit Ooh. um if you can get it just by 70 percent. okay if you can't though you can get this and just be very careful with it um and then just dilute it with a bit of water to make it about 70%. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I'm gonna flip you around in a minute. We're gonna tweak the camera again, which is always good fun, isn't it? So that hopefully you can see vaguely what I'm doing. And we might flip it around a few times today so that you can see everything that's going on um, because we're gonna to need to spritz in something that means the craft room won't turn a funny color as well. So let's make some. I'm gonna start by angling you down to see the desk and um then i think we will flip you over the other way so let's give this a go or oh, you can see my hand for a minute there right let's can i angle this down no i can't not like that anyway i can like that though where are we getting are we getting some desk oh that's horrible now we'll just flip over the other way then like we have done in the past there we are. My desk is a mess. I think we'll do it this way. Okay. Desk is an atrocious mess at the moment. Somebody commented, I think it was you, Baz, commented last week about how tidy the desk was looking. Well, not anymore. There's a big pile of stamps over there. Look. Okay. <laughs> that I haven't put away. Okay. So. I've got my big bottle of isopropanol alcohol. I've got a bit of water, okay? This was the this was the um purpose as one I did. So it looks really dark in the bottle, doesn't it? Okay? But then if you put it down, what colour this is left is fairly similar. So that was my purpose as one. And I've got an empty spritzer bottle, okay? These just come from the supermarket or from the chemist boots or what have you. Now there's all those rules about how much liquid you can take on aeroplanes and what have you. You can get hold of these quite easily in like the holiday shop section-y part, okay? So this one's empty for now. To the empty bottle, I'm going to carefully add some isopropanol. If you've got 70%, you can just go with that straight. I'm going to have to dilute mine down a bit. So, I'm trying to see if I can show you how much I've got, but I can't tip it up, can I, without the water tipping up. I've got about, oh, about an inch in the bottom of there. Put the lid back on the isopropanol. So I want it about 70%. What's that, about a third? How long does it last in the bottle when it's made up? If you keep the lid on it forever, okay, eventually you'll find that the alcohol will evaporate. Um, so I need about a third of water to make it about 70%. So about a third of an inch then, just to dilute that down. Which lid goes on which, can't remember. <laughs> so, okay. This one, this bottle actually had an old, um, look at that, where we used to make spritzer, shimmer spritz, using the old... Um, you know that shimmer paint stuff you used to get in the little bottles. I've still got some somewhere. And we used to add that to alcohol to make like a shimmer spray. Okay. And what happened with this particular bottle is actually all the liquid evaporated and the paint stayed at the bottom. I've tried giving it a good rinse out, even with the isopropyl alcohol, and it won't actually re-dilute, which is why I've put water in there quite happily. Um, okay. But eventually the alcohol is just going to burn off. OK, but if it does, in theory, you'll be left with re at the bottom. And then if you put more alcohol in, it'll just go back into solution. OK, so for this one, I've done a purple one. 
and I've done a green one. The other colour in this paper is Calypso Coral and I'm going to do um, a Calypso Coral one this time because I want to see what it looks like. Okay, can you then top up the book? Yes, you can. Just pop a little bit more alcohol in there and just bring it back to life, basically. So it's got a little bit cloudy. Maybe it's where I shook him. Right then. So now we're going to add some reinker. So I've got Calypso Coral reinker. Okay. And you, you need more drops than you think you do. I'll probably put about 15 or so drops in there to start with. But Calypso Coral's a paler colour and I suspect we might need more than that. Oh look, it's got a sort of a funny orange colour. Weird. It looks a bit black. I wonder if I've got too much alcohol in there. If you use neat alcohol, it does make the reinkers go black. So it could be that I've got too much alcohol in there. What we're going to do is I've got some scraps of white card because I want to obviously test what colour it's going to be before I spray it on boxes that cost a pound a piece. Whether here's a bit of empty box. Look, okay. I'm going to try and get this on the screen for you, but it could be interesting. On this scrap of white card, I'm going to spray it, and then we get an idea of what sort of colour we're looking at. Now actually I would say that's gone wetter than I expected but the colour's not bad. I think I want it a shade darker. I think I'm going to pop a couple more drops in. No idea how that many that was. That was just a good squeeze. Okay, I'm not counting drops. <laughs> Okay, let's get rid of that bit of card. Let's have another scrap of card. Here's my box. Let's see how that looks. Give it a good shake. Oh, that's brighter this time, definitely. Don't know how well you can see. You couldn't see at all, could you? We'll work on that. Oh, that's better. Look at that. Oh, now that came out nice. I like that. How well can you see that? How well does that go with the paper? Hmm, not bad. Could we go a touch darker? What do you reckon? A couple more drops? Hmm, no, I think I might leave it that. I think I'm going to leave it at that. Right then, I want you to be able to see in this box. I'm going to try and see what I can do so that you can see in this box. So bear with us while we jiggle the camera around so that you can see in this box just loosen all my brackets I need you to face forwards there we are you need to be able to see in this box but I need to be able to see in this box as well where are we up to Try and let my iPad catch up with me now to see how well you can see in this box. You've basically got a back corner of a box, haven't you? Let's try some more. How's that? I'm having to wait for my iPad to catch up so that I can see what you can see because I can't see the phone anymore. How are we doing? That's not bad. Right, let's leave it there then. Otherwise, we could be here till Christmas. Right then, so I've got my egg box. And I'm going to put this inside here. And hopefully you can see it. In fact, I could probably put it a bit more to the back. Okay. All right. And then we've got our spritzer. And you're just going to spritz it, basically. Okay. It used quite a lot. I mean, there's quite a lot in this bottle. Okay. It did take quite a lot, but it might depend. This one is covering way better than those other ones did. I don't know what I've done differently, but it's good because I'm on video now. <laughs> and then you just need to keep turning and don't get huh, it in your face. And 
personally, I sprayed the inside as well. And now you can see why you need the box. <laughs> As you see, if you go over it again, it just gets a little bit darker all the time. Okay, can you still see that? Okay, and you can just keep building up the colour, okay? And if once you've done it once and you decide it's not dark enough, you could always put a bit more re in and spray it again, okay? So I found that you just needed to watch in here. Because obviously where it was folded up, that bit got a bit missed. Missed. <laughs> Get it? And now the outside's brighter than the inside. Anyway, so you just keep going until you're happy, basically. So if you were doing quite a few, um, either leave them plain <laughs> or make a big bottle of spreads. Get Maybe get one of those ones for spraying your plants and things in the garden. Right then. If we're happy with that, let's jiggle this around back to where we were. Let's have a look now. There goes a quick glimpse of me on the way past. Put the egg carton in, then we can see. Put the egg carton in, then we can see. No, I missed that, sorry. So there we are. Okay. So now I have this beautiful orangey coloured one. Now it's a little bit damp, obviously, but because we use mostly alcohol, it'll dry off fairly quickly. But if you want to speed it up, especially at this time of year, pop it on a warm radiator. Um, unless you're in Australia, in which case it's probably quite warm everywhere. Um, in which case you don't need to. Okay, but if you're in the UK or Canada or somewhere where it's cold, then pop it on a warm radiator. Okay, it could probably have done with a little bit up the hole, look. But no one's going to be looking up there. Right then. And then to finish them off, I have wrapped mine in some of this designer series paper. Okay, this is the succulent garden designer series paper. I don't know whether I've got any to hand. Let me have a little rummage about, see what I've got handy. No, it's not there. Let's have a little looky look. What am I doing with it? Well, here's the packet, but where's the bit I've already been cutting? Must be in a drawer somewhere. So it's kind of up to you what pattern you would want. I've obviously been using that one. I'm not sure that one goes with the Calypso quite so well now, though. Let's have a little look. Mm. Maybe that one. Oh, yeah, maybe that one, I think. So, I've cut a strip of paper about six centimetres. Okay, if you're in America or you just generally prefer inches, that's about two and a half inches. Just under two and a half inches. This one's a bit wider. I think that one's two inches and this is just over two inches. This one's the six centimetres, that's five. What you'll find is, is that they barely wrap. Do you see? That's the overlap. That's the full 12 inch, 12 inch width length of the piece of card sorry that's it okay you haven't even got enough to stick them down what you could do is cut yourself a little tag of card of some description okay and use it put some glue on it and use it to stick it together maybe stamp something on it make it funky or put the overlap at the top and stick something over it to join them together okay I've just chosen, worked on the basis that once I've tied it with twine, it ain't going anywhere. So, <clears throat> there we go. There we are. I think I prefer, I'm finding the pink and green a little bit more subtle. This has come out quite orangey and rather in your face. <laughs> 
to be honest with you. I'm not sure. From a crafty carrot perspective, yeah, definitely. Um, it's still a little bit damp, which is why I'm not doing anything with it at the moment. So, um, but there you go. So that is how you spritz your egg cartons. Okay. You can see that my original colour is actually quite a bit paler. Um, oh, no, that is the... No, that is the second colour. So it must be because this is natural rather than white. It's, and I've spritzed that quite a few times. That's why it's come out that bit darker. Okay. So, when you're happy, and then you can obviously decorate it however you like. But that is how you spritz those... Um, those egg cartons from stamping up to get them all different colours. I think it would be great actually if you did a rainbow. In fact, I might I might at some point do that since I've already got green and orange and purple. I can do a red one and a yellow one and some sort of pink or blue. Um, I think I think um, I'm tempted to say go with darker colour inks. In fact, I'll turn you around now. If I'm just waffling, I'll turn you around again. So let's. Right then, and let's move you back a bit. Do you think it would be lighter if you hadn't added the extra? Absolutely, yeah, it would have been. It would have been lighter. But so it depends what you're going for. I think I would be tempted to say you're probably better off going with a darker reinker. Um, like I say, this purple one that was perfect plum. That's actually quite dark ink. Um, I think if you're going to use a darker ink, add less ink. Um, depending on the colour you're going for. But let's say, for example, I wanted to do one pool party. I'm not sure I'd use pool party ink. I think I'd probably use Bermuda Bay ink, which is the shade up. Put less ink drops in because, as you can see, it's going to come out paler anyway. So I think I think it would be more that. So the yellow, I would maybe use the crushed curry ink and then put, put less ink in. Um... And like I say, test it on some scrap paper till you're happy with the colour. Um, but I think I would start, if you used a very light ink, you'd have to use so much ink to actually get a colour that was any decent hue. So I think you're probably better off picking a darker colour and then um, putting less in, if that makes sense. Does it absorb the ink a lot? So you need more drops? No, I don't think so. I think it's just how diluted the ink then is. I think the problem is you see these three inkers and that's just pure ink. So it looks quite dark in the pot. I mean, look at this one for Calypso Coral. Look how dark that looks in the pot. Okay, and even when you drop it out, just like a single drop, because it's pure ink. Look how dark that looks, just as ink. So I don't think that so much that it's that it absorbs a lot, so you need more drops, but just just where it's diluted, basically. And that's why I say test it on a bit of card, a bit of scrap card, and add some more ink. But you can always add more ink. You can't really take you can't take it back out once you've put too much in. But actually, you know that's Calypso Coral ink. But if you compare that to a bit, a bit of Calypso Coral card, and I'm trying to see if I've got a bit, and everything hanging about on my desk seems to be Watermelon Wonder. <laughs> okay, there's Calypso Coral card. So, um, so I, I think you just need more ink than you think you do. Um, but it's one to play with and play around with. Um, I haven't actually played with it that much. Mine's just been a sort of a trial and error. Spritz it on a bit of scrap paper. How does that look? Hmm. I'll put a few more drops in. <laughs> it really has been total guesswork and nothing, nothing um, clever or intelligent about it in any way. Um, so this one did end up a little bit damp. And I'm not sure whether... Whether I had too much water in there, less alcohol. The whole point about the alcohol is that evaporates off. So this stops it from getting too wet because the alcohol evaporates. But the Whisper White would take up the colour differently. Oh yeah, definitely. Obviously, this is much more absorptive. Is that the right way? Absorbed. 
absorptive is that the word <laughs> i can't remember the word um just but yeah like like a like a cardboard carton um so it does so but i'm not sure i think if i was to peel off like a layer i think it hasn't really gone down inside i don't want to trash my carton no offense but it's still the ink's really only sitting on the top couple of layers it's not like it's so right down to the core i think if we broke a bit off it, it'd still be white inside um but obviously these aren't white to begin with they're that sort of natural color and yes the mat this material is more absorptive than than just a scrap this is thick whisper white so actually it's not very absorptive that doesn't sound right <laughs> and i can't work out what the right word is so like i say i think it's one to play with basically um but definitely get get alcohol get alcohol um to um evaporate off so that it doesn't get too soggy basically okay right then so that's been our crafting for today um and our bit of a chat so um like i say i probably won't do a weekly live next week because the kids are on half term next week and there's no peace in this house anywhere at all <laughs> um so i probably won't bother with a facebook live next week but i have got blog posts pretty much lined up all week so there's plenty for you to see on there and then i will come back the following week maybe i'll do an extra one the following week to make up for it i don't know <laughs> we'll see how it goes we'll see how much catching up i've got to do because no matter how hard i try to get ahead it never always works out that way <laughs> there's always something i forgot to do that and then when they do go back i've got my monthly class at the local hall as well so i'll be getting ready for that and what have you so but i will be back soon thank you for stopping in today and watching me make a mess in my craft room <laughs> might pop round for an inch of alcohol <laughs> do you know what ebay i ordered it um about lunchtime one day and the guy delivered at nine o'clock the following morning that quick they had free next day delivery okay and the bottle that big bottle of alcohol was about eight pounds free next day delivery that's a liter i think that bottle yeah free next day delivery i ordered it I think it was if you ordered before three, they would ship it that day. I ordered it about half past one, something like that. And the chappy in the van turned up by about half past nine the following morning and delivered it that fast. So um, it's probably worth just jumping on there, to be honest, because <laughs> you'll have it really quick. So it because I thought I'd have to um, wait for days, you know, oh, and, and a lot of them were offering free delivery. But it was like, oh, order today, and this was something like a Thursday, um, for delivery like next Tuesday or something like that. And I was like, no, I want it before. I don't want to wait that long. I want it before then. Um, so yeah. But this particular one I found was like, oh no, if you order it today, Thursday, you can have it Friday morning. You can have it Friday. And then the guy happened to come first thing. I must have been one of the early drops on the round. So yeah, it got it that fast. So it's worth having a look um so yeah might need a link i'll see if i can find i've probably got it's probably still got the email somewhere and it'll be in my ebay shopping history or something like that i'll see if i can find it for you um that's only going to help people if you're in the uk by the way <laughs> okay <laughs> don't order it from them if you live abroad you could be waiting weeks <laughs> still quicker for me to drive to you well this is true this is true <laughs> it is quicker um so yeah thank you ever so much for watching today and i will be back very soon with more projects and more fun and more chats okay thanks for watching bye